Hello friends, wizards, witches, and muggles. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. Today, as you can see, I am here at Feathers and Furs Falconry Center, and we are joined with the lovely Sadie, who you may recognize from one of my previous videos. If you haven't watched that, then go and check that out up there. But we are gonna do a little update video now that we are here in the brand new location of <laughs> Feathers and Fur. So do you just wanna update and kind of do a little recap of what happened in 2020? Okay, so in September 2020, we lost my whole life. So we were approached by the new owners of our garden center where we had been based for a 11 years and he basically gave everybody three months to leave and we had obviously during covid run all our money down we, yeah. we were absolutely just desperate and it was with the amazing help of your followers and your magical family that we were managed to raise the money in order to be able to move and we've had to rebuild from complete scratch, scratch. so this yeah. place was a scaffolding yard believe it or not yeah. before we started <laughs> and we had built everything lamp posts fence aviary yeah, it yeah. so hard. So I guess this video is a little bit of a thank you to you guys That's for <laughs> donating to the GoFundMe to help house and like move all of these birds because there was 23 that had to move house and have them all rebuilt and a whole new centre built. So we're going to be giving you a look around to see where your donations went and what they've done and it's absolutely beautiful here and all of the birds are so happy in their new home so i am going to show you some of the birds as well you will see a few friendly faces like gimli and <laughs> we will also fly a few birds as well but yeah it's so nice to be back and seeing all of this like built lovely. and it's so gorgeous. lovely can't wait to show you can't wait to show everyone <laughs> Okay, with that said, let's go and meet some of the owls and all of the birds. Let's go in. Come on, Dobby, lead the way. So I guess something that has crossed my mind, which is how do you even move and even contemplate moving? Like, how did you find this place to move to in such a short amount of time as well? Well, after a panic attack <laughs> and lots of tears and, and actually deciding whether we really even wanted to carry on with the business. There was a, a half an hour where my other half was like, well, we've got a chance to go and have a proper life or go and yeah. do something completely different. So that obviously went out the window when I was like, no, I'm keeping all my birds and of course we're doing this. Yeah. And, uh, and so it was a massive kind of mission just to go and find a suitable location. So obviously we didn't want to start from scratch for having nothing, so no, no toilets, no cafe. So we wanted somewhere where all of that was already in place. And, and car parks as well, bonkersly, you have to think about things yeah. like that. So we went to a few, around where we are, there's a lot of craft villages and garden centres, but some of them had like pheasant farms right next door, or chicken farms, that was my favourite. <laughs> um, I, did, I met a lovely couple who were offering us their, almost their back garden, but it had a massive electricity pylon in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, and just, if a woman even offered to buy us a field and we would have to then build the whole centre from there. Wow, um, that's a very kind offer. Very, very kind. That's how kind people were. We had so much support. But actually, it was Anne, who's one of our um, wonderful volunteers. She lives very close to here. Yeah. And she said, she phoned me up. She's like, I've just been to Moss End and I accosted the, the site manager. Aww. And I've asked him whether we could have an interview, a kind of meeting, an interview. Yeah. And so we did. We came up. And this area that we're stood in now was actually a scaffolder's yard <laughs> full of rubbish. They would come home and they'd have a drink and there was beer bottles everywhere and mattresses and pants. Pants. <laughs> Who leaves their pants at work? I don't know. Anyway, so, um, but it was absolutely perfect because the garden centre itself has everything. It's, you know, it's very busy, had car park, had uh, toilets and a lovely restaurant. Mm. And so it, kind of, it felt nice. Yeah, I know that seems so you really had a weird. feeling about it. Just even being here, even the birds seem to behave differently Aww. now that we're here. And so it felt wonderful but it was literally the blankest of blank canvases that you could possibly Yeah, I remember, I remember seeing some photos. It looks like you were starting from zero, basically. Yes, so including things like, so even the bit of concrete we're stood on now, we've had to put down. This wasn't here, this was a big muddy patch. Wow. A lot of people assumed we hired companies to come and do it. You but didn't. But we, we couldn't afford that. No. And we wanted every penny that people donated had to be used on something that felt good, not frivolously spending it on a builder who was going to charge us twice as much. Sure. 
So I'm very, very lucky in the fact that I have a wonderful other half and he is a carpenter by trade, but seems to be able to do everything. Amazing. I mean, <laughs> he just project managed. I mean, he held me up by the bootstraps every day, mm. project managed us within an inch of our life, put in all our electrics, all our water, organised, even moving the Avery's. So some of them, like the Avery's that are behind us, these were over at Lads. Mm. And we had built them, he built them originally, and we'd built them in sections not with an idea that we'd ever have to take them down again. It was just easier to build them. <laughs> but we literally took each section apart, each wall, all the roof bits, and he built a frame on a triple axle trailer that he's got. And we lifted, he and I lifted them on. My brother-in-law actually came up to help with this one because it was a little past my strength yeah. scale. And, and then brought them over and rebuilt them back up together. Just mind blown I was what say, you're able to do. It sounds like <laughs> such a big task to do, like without a workforce behind it. Yeah, well, we had a workforce, but all voluntary, all um, just people giving bits of days. Yeah. Uh, four of my ladies are still with us, which is amazing. But without them, I wouldn't have coped. But even just the simple stuff like painting. Yeah, <sighs> I remember all of your Instagram updates. You were constantly doing something, <laughs> whether it was laying gravel, pulling weeds, painting. You were just working for such a long time to get this center to what it is today yeah. from yeah. pretty yes. much ground zero and up. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, should we go and have a look at the rest of it? Let's go and have a little look. Ah, <laughs> oh, wow. So the first thing that we obviously come to through the entrance is this classroom which is quite a big building. Oh, and a massive mission to move. So that was actually probably one of the most complicated parts of our move because we were originally going to pick it up on a crane. So some of our other Averys, we actually did that. We picked them up with a crane. We had four of them, picked them up, put them on the long wheelbase trailer and drove them here. So wow. we had plans to do that with our classroom as well. Turns out that it is six inches too wide to turn at one set of traffic lights down oh, the bottom no. of the road. That's unfortunate. No, but it costs nearly £20,000 when I originally built it. So I didn't want to Didn't want to leave it, yeah. And it, we couldn't afford, again, through lockdown, the, one of the other issues we faced was the price of wood. Anyone that did any decorating, wood went up in price, paint went up in price. And so we were looking at nearly £1,000 just to replace the lining of the walls in yeah. our classroom. So we actually made the decision to take the whole thing down bit by bit and piece move it piece. Bit, piece by piece again. Oh. So, but it's so worth it. We need our classroom anyway, because we're obviously an all weather centre. Yeah. So being able to be inside was absolutely perfect. But yeah, that was one of the biggest complications. Yeah. So what do you moving. actually use the classroom for? Obviously it's a classroom. But... Yeah, Te teaching, <laughs> yeah. Um, mostly for getting out of the weather. So yeah. if we've got birthday parties, they come in there and eat, but we can also fly the birds in there. Aww. We do lots of um, like pulling apart pellets in our family owl encounters so we yeah. go inside to do that and in the winter sometimes not many people are used to working outside all the time so we have to have a bit of a heater in there yeah. to go and warm up a oh. little bit for the customers <laughs> birthday and... parties I mean my birthday's coming up just saying <laughs> <laughs> you are welcome any so <laughs> obviously I mean that was a big thing to take down and rebuild but like there's so much more that you had to do here like the fencing and all that kind and of stuff that's when I sort of stand back after doing everything, I can't quite believe that you've done it, that I've done it. But also that it, I feel sometimes a little bit like, do people actually see the work? So all our um, barrier fencing, yeah, it, it's barrier fencing. Nobody ever thinks about it. There are 96 holes dug into rubble. So we had to buy a pneumatic drill. Oh. I mean, it was a very cheap secondhand pneumatic drill, but like I own a pneumatic drill <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah, that's stuff that, that people, as you quite rightly said, don't really think of when you're doing that kind of stuff. think about it. So, and like, e but everything from the, like I said, the scalpings, the gravel, we actually reused some of the gravel. So the ladies and I went back to the old site and scooped, scooped up. up the gravel. Oh, wow. That was um, five tonnes, I think that was. Five tonne of gravel we scooped up and brought back over. You must yeah. have been hench after this wow. thing. <laughs> yes, I felt the muscles. It was it was hard work, but it felt so satisfying. Rewarding. To be able to see, like I physically built this center with Jamie and the team, because uh, Olivia, oh, she worked so hard. She was actually looking after the birds whilst Jamie and I were doing the building. Yeah. So it was such a team effort. I remember I us. visited you last year. 
um, for the first time walking in and it was like my eyes just lit up seeing it all <laughs> and all of the hard work it has paid off it's oh, absolutely gorgeous here it, it feels amazingly different from our last site mm. and yeah just to have built it from scratch is something very very unique I think to yeah. have, for a business you know most people have their own they hire a shop or Blood, they rent a shop tears. everything has gone into yeah. this <laughs> So the last time that we filmed with you in 2020, it's been a long time yes. <laughs> and it's taken you quite a long while to open up again. Yes. Yeah, so and you've been facing quite a few hurdles, <laughs> shall we say, um, <laughs> to get to the point in fully opening. Do you want to just discuss a little bit about that? So, yeah, that was the bonkers thing. You came to visit us in October 2020 and we had just started building. I think I mentioned that wood had been delivered. Yeah. And we had, so initially the, the man who sort of changed the garden center gave us three months. Then he came back and said we could have six months to build. But for us, lockdown had finished and we didn't know that the world was going to come back into second lockdown so yeah. for us in our heads the quicker we could get back and open the quicker we could be flying the birds and for the birds welfare you know we want them to be flying yeah and when you're building you can't be managing birds weights and flying them so we pushed as hard as humanly possible. So over winter, we were painting. So we had to drape massive tarpaulins over newly built aviaries so we could heat them from inside so we could dry them. Wow. The red paint on the fences, which you can't actually even see, which is very frustrating. We were, um, as we were painting, there were ice crystals in the paint because we were just push, push, push. We've got to be open, got to be open. We actually finished building in April, 2021. We had done, like we were kind of there and we talked to the council because obviously we had changed councils and we were, we had our animals activities licensed from our previous site, which allows us to use birds to teach with and, and mm. fly to. And we had been open at our last site with just that, the public were able to come round. And when I spoke to the council with, with now, they were like, oh yeah, no, you can't open to the public. And so we could continue to do our sessions. So we got our, a new, we had to reapply for a new animals activities license, which with the whole backlog of COVID took a while for that. And uh, so we got that, but all the sort of, we're getting ready, open to the public. Yay, come and see. Yeah. I literally felt, in fact, I can remember the conversation when she phoned. I was buying, we'd finished really late here and we'd gone for a kebab. And <laughs> I was stood in the lay-by reading my phone and it almost felt the same as that initial meeting that we had worked so hard, all of us together, and suddenly the public weren't going to be able to come in. So you'd hit a brick wall. Yeah. And, and you'd, you'd been slaving away. Probably. With this goal in yeah. mind. And then suddenly the goal just got taken away. And we didn't actually even know where the end was then. Yeah. Like we didn't know how long it was going to take. Yeah, because I am I remember wanting to do an update. And we wanted to do this. But until we had a zoo license, which yeah. we'll mention in a minute... That's why we've taken so long to update you guys on this. Um, we were, you had to get a zoo license for yeah. this place. Yeah, so the animals activity license wasn't enough um, for this council and we needed to apply for a zoo license. And again, that, that sounds really simple. Apply for a zoo license. It <laughs> required everything from change of use planning. So we had to change the use of this site because it had been retail and we had to change it to zoo, <laughs> which apparently is a very obscure little change of use, which also then meant getting highways, fire brigade, everybody else like that to agree. Highways thought that we were going to be the size of Legoland, which if you're not local is a massive theme park. We are literally- And this is only a small- A teeny little, tiny, yeah. we're not even as big as most people's back gardens in Berkshire. <laughs> like it really is tiny, but finally like- You did it. <laughs> it took a year and a half beyond that point, but we finally got to open and it was it was touch and go because we were paying for everything over that whole period. And it got to the point where I had about two months, two months left. And that's all I could afford. Because a... besides the experiences you do, you were essentially forced to be closed for a year and a yeah. half. Yeah, um, and not through COVID. So there was no extra funding by that time COVID had finished. Which for a, a business on. can be... <laughs> fatal yes and we literally I said to all the guys that were here I said we've got two months that's it and I phoned the council I was like if we can't get open in the next two months 
everything we've worked for is finished because I cannot afford to pay the rent. I can't afford to pay the insurance, the food, everything that I've been paying every month for. I, mean, I live in a caravan. I haven't been able to take a wage at all. I, had to, I lost my house with the move as well. I lived on site before, so I had to find somewhere else to live. And finally, finally, the inspectors arrived and yeah, we got a zoo license. So yeah. everyone thinks we might like grow out and start getting zebras and lions. <laughs> it's just the I'm birds. I'm just going to stick with the birds. Like this is enough for me. But <laughs> it is good news for you guys because it does mean that this falconry centre is fully open. You can come and visit. You can come visit Sadie. You can come visit Gimli and all of the birds that you may have already met in my last video and some of the birds that you're going to see today. So you can just come and enjoy all of those as well as booking experiences, which we'll talk about later on too, because we've got some birds to see today as well, which I'm so excited about to reunite with some yeah. of my faves, but maybe we'll <laughs> see a few, a few new faces. <laughs> So after all of the hard work and all of the time waiting for your zoo license, now that you're finally open, <laughs> what are the kind of experiences that people can book here at Feathers and Furs? So the whole business works as two things. So we've, A, we've got the centre, so people can just come without booking and wander around the centre and see all the birds. We're not like some of the bigger centres where you go and watch falconry demos and things mm. like that because we're so small, I can't, I can't do both things at the same time. But uh, so for that, people can come walk around, see everybody, we've got quizzes, and we've also done a little center tour that tells you about the actual people or birds rather than kind of eagle owls. Yeah, so we, like that, Norman. Yes, Norman's got a wonderful story. But then the other side of the business is the session. So we do lots of schools, scouts, brownies, WI talks, environmental group talks, or you can come here and actually go up into the field and do a flying session where the birds yeah. all like we did Which previously. I did with my family last yes. year, which oh, was so fun, getting so my special. mom and dad and my brother <laughs> to get hands on with all of these birds. They absolutely loved it. And for me, it's the intimacy of it that I find really important. Yeah. So you can watch a falconry display and see the bird fly from A to B, but to be able to see and really look into an eagle owl's <laughs> eyes or see their eyelashes on a kestrel, really makes people fall in love a bit better with the birds and I completely and then, agree <laughs> well it's the kind of background conservation isn't it that's my background if you understand a kestrel and you love a kestrel in that much detail perhaps then you'll be happy to go and save the field that you know the wild kestrels are in and yeah. stop them building a million houses on it and just those little twists I think are really just so important for conservation and the environment that we live in if you don't know what's in there how will you ever want to save it so absolutely yeah, but me. I completely agree about it being so intimate like getting hands-on with Norman for example Gimli like you actually get to get up close and personal with these beautiful owls that are so beautifully and professionally I may add kept by Sadie yeah. And there's just not experiences like it that I've ever personally experienced. Oh, so, yes, you. if you are interested in owls and you really want to come and see some and, more importantly, learn about them, then all of the links will be down in the description down below. But I think it might be time to reunite with some of our feathered friends yes, that I've missed. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Who shall we see first? I'm thinking Gimli. we got to start big. <laughs> Let's go see Gimli. <laughs> I've missed him very much, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Come on! Actually, just before we go get Gimli, you guys know that I love a good gift shop. Now, you didn't have a gift shop before, did you? We had a little cupboard, I think. It was just in the background, which was basically <laughs> my grandma's glass cabinet. <laughs> OK, well, this is a lot bigger than a cupboard. Yeah. They have a gift shop here called Dawn's gift shop. Do you want to explain about the name of this gift shop? So Dawn was actually one of our initial volunteers and helped build as well. And um, unfortunately, she passed away really suddenly. And so we we had to name it after her. She she was the organizer and kept me tidy. And <laughs> she would have loved to have run the gift shop. So we knew it was always going to be called Dawn's gift shop. So. Oh well, it's a very <laughs> beautiful gift shop. Seriously, guys, if you love owls, everything owls and all sorts of birds, <laughs> you've got everything. You've got plushies. What have we got? We've got magnets, we've books, got, lots yeah. of books and cards and mugs. <laughs> There's so much stuff. You could not get my dad out of this gift shop when I bought him here. We both <laughs> all just came away with just 
bags full of owls. It has stuff. been a new side to the business that I've had to learn is going and finding like strolling Etsy to yeah. find suppliers and so it's got it's some things from like small businesses in there. Isn't Actually, it? and lots of local businesses. Local. I'm a real big local yeah, business. So amazing. even one of our volunteers, she. Um, she learned to draw in lockdown. Yeah. She's amazing. Okay. And so we stock her products. And it's these. These are her bits. Oh, very cute. I think I actually may have bought one of those cards <laughs> last time I was Absolutely here. Absolutely stunning. So, yep, yeah, there is a gift shop that you can uh, get your owl merch from. <laughs> it's very cute. No, it's really, really nice. I'm definitely going to have a look at that later. But for now, let's get onto the flying. I won't get distracted anymore. I promise. <laughs> let's go. Can you go? Oh, you're already coming to say hello. <laughs> I can feel your claws on my jumper. <laughs> Put your leg up. Thank you. Can I get a bit of chicken off your beak if you need to put on that? <laughs> Don't want that on there. Look, you've got fluff on your face. <laughs> Fluffy face. Right, are you ready? Are you steady? And are you going to go? Go. You going to go? You going to flap me in the face? Go on then. This next bird is called Milo. And do you want to introduce Milo? Well, this is a new one to your family, actually. This is a Harris hawk. So we have veered away a little bit from the owls. This is a South American bird and is absolutely one of the smartest birds that we have here at the centre. As a species, they're unusual because they group work. So the boys, are, which is what Milo is, are much smaller than the girls. And they work together as a team in the wild to create kills for their dinner. <laughs> Oh, he's so majestic. He's so special, isn't he? He's my ultimate autumn accessory. <laughs> Beautiful, bright yellow feet as well. So Milo is actually very special here at the centre. He's one of the first birds that we bred ourselves. Um, it was a little bit of an accident. We have his mum who was here as a rescue and, uh, and I wasn't sure she'd be fertile because she was quite old. And I put, him in with, uh, put her in with one of my old males and lo and behold, babies happened. Uh, but unfortunately, she's a terrible mum and she actually ate Milo's sibling as he hatched. So we had to, we knew that Milo was hatching because they do something called pipping, which is where they just kind of poke their beak up through the edge of the shell. And then it takes about 24 hours for them to hatch out. So we knew when he would arrive. And as he hatched out, we had to take him from Alice, his mum, and hand rear him. So Milo actually believes he's a cross between a Labrador, a human, and a Harris hawk, which makes him <laughs> so friendly, sometimes a little too friendly. If you're not ready with your hand, you yeah. would land on your head instead. Oh, he's <laughs> absolutely beautiful. A bit lighter than Gimli. He weighs in at one pound and seven, so yes, much lighter than a three pound snowy owl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not shy at all, are you? Got some beautiful little floofs around the, um, the beak. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> the thing that I love so much about all the birds is sometimes when you're at a show or a, a fair and you see the birds flying, it's just a bird, you know, it's just a Harris hawk. But here we try and make people know that it's not just a bird, it's Milo and his background story and that he has a sister and that his mum's here and that his dad, unfortunately his dad's passed away now, but I can tell you the stories of his dad and I just think that's so special because it's such a unique connection with birds of prey because they're very much like cats in the sense of they could take you or leave you yeah. um, and there's no real loyalty to you like the dogs would be. And so to have that family and that kind of interest, like the fact that he's trusting you enough to come and land on your hand, that's a unique yeah, thing, we, I think. I've never met Milo before no. in a personal setting, yet here he is flying straight to me. And we're best buds. I know that you're here for the snacks, really, there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fickle love, quite often. Very fickle love. 
So Harris Hawks are used in the UK now, um, A, for hunting, but also as a pest control bird. So you might often see someone in central London or in train stations flying these guys because they don't have to hunt. They can just be with the falconer. They're used to sort of walk along and scare away things like pigeons. So wow. they don't do any damage to old buildings or you know, around airports to prevent plane strikes. They're such an amazing species and so intelligent in, in terms of what they can do with you. Just love all the colouring in his feathers. Yes. He's got some light browns and some dark browns as well. And he, the little white tail tips. He definitely screams sort of Arizona desert, yeah, doesn't he? Which yeah. obviously these guys are from, <laughs> from southern northern California and Mexico. Oh, you dropped it. <laughs> all the way down. <laughs> Coming back up. <laughs> Shouldn't drop your snacks. <laughs> Next up, we've got the lovely Norman. I have met Norman before. He's got very tickly feet, but I'm not going to tickle them. If you would like to see that, check out the last video that we filmed with him. But yes, for those that have not met Norman, ooh, he's a European eagle, eagle owl. owl. Yeah, and one of the largest owls we have in this country. Yeah, so. a very big owl. And he's got his very big plumicorns. I remember well what they were called, which yeah. is little tufty bits at the top, they're called plumicorns, and he's so majestic. But yes, it is like weightlifting a little bit with him because he's quite big, but it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could be a girl. Remember, girls are always bigger than the boys, so True. he weighs in at four pounds and the girls wrap it around have the you six pound mark. you got my hair in your beak? You have. <laughs> <laughs> um, any fun facts about Norman? So Norman's actually our rescue owl, and uh, he was taken from a chap who thought you could put owls in the cage. Harry Potter carries Hedwig in. Yeah, I remember you saying, I like, think... owls are not pets. No, no, terrible pets, terrible pets. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he actually grew into the wire of the cage and had to have surgery. And for a long time, he lived, he did live the life of uh, luxury over in Wales with a friend of mine. And then when we took him on, you actually met him. You were one of the first people to start flying him. Yeah. And he hadn't ever flown for people before we started here and gradually gradually he was getting better and better and then of course lockdown happened yeah and he went almost backwards and then the move kind of sent him backwards even more but we've actually just started really bringing him back into work oh, so fantastic he actually went to his first school a couple of weeks ago which was amazing yeah, yeah it's in, in world book week so all the children were in fancy dress and it was amazing he did so well so proud so of him so he's he's settled here now very much well, that's so good very to much hear. So. so we can probably fly him because he's got a very big wings Span. He's a big boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big boy. I'm very looking forward to flying him. But so we have to fly Norman on this. Yeah, so he flies on a piece of string. It's called a crayance line. And even though he is as trained as we would be happy to, Norman still suffers from almost <laughs> Like he goes a bit blank and then suddenly he'll just take off in a straight line as if something has frightened him. Spooked. And yeah, but nothing spooking him. And it's almost something inbuilt. And we just wonder whether it's something from his past. Like a bit know. of PTSD or yeah. something. Yeah, and for his own safety, we fly him on the on the crayon slide. But he flies out every day. So, and we've got such a big, beautiful space. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Showing off now. <laughs> Thanks. He's like, come on, mummy. What? <laughs> You're showing off that you can fly. Yeah. All right, let's get you flying. That's clearly what you want. <laughs> <laughs> come on, then, dude. Come on. Thank you. 
Go on then. <laughs> Okay guys, so that is the day with Gimli and all of the owls and the lovely Sadie. So as I've mentioned in this video already, please do check out the Feathers and Fur website down below. You can come and visit, you can see these birds for yourself and get in like a hands-on position. Gim, are you coming? Gim, 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 Gim up. <laughs> You can get hands-on with Gimli yourself. Get your feathers out of my face. <laughs> and you can also book your experiences as well. And look how beautiful he is. Absolutely gorgeous. So you can come and take some pictures with Gimli as well. But yes, thank you so much for um, thank letting me... Thank you for coming. And thank with... you again to everybody that yeah. supported us. It was just... Yeah, all of yeah. your support means the world. Not only to me, but obviously Sadie and all of her team and Gimli. Bye, mate. <laughs> 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 He's gone to sulk in the corner. <laughs> find a find a pheasant that are under there. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we yeah. try one more? Because that was quite messy on because Gimli was a pain in the butt. <laughs> He's an animal. <laughs> this is exactly what animals do. Yep. I love that he's a pain in the butt. <laughs> Gim! Gim! Come here! Gim! <laughs> Gimli! <laughs> Gim! What's this? Maybe take three. <laughs> take three. Let's try that again. Gim! What's this? <laughs> Why? Gim. It's just like, no. Gim, what's this? What's this? I know you can see it. <laughs> Gim, <gasps> Gim, look, a big floppy. <laughs> Gim. Gim. <laughs> All right, have you finished mucking up my hair for the outro? <laughs> But yes, you can come along and see Gimli and all of his friends and the lovely Sadie and you get to learn so much about all of the owls. See you later. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a magical thumbs up and I will see you soon. And I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be more videos together. I love the owls here. I want to move in. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> welcome. Right. Bye guys. <laughs> you are a silly, silly owl. <laughs> He's like, the minute you want me to do something, I won't do it, but let's Come let here. <laughs> He's like, I don't want you to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, one more bit. <laughs> the very juicy bits at the bottom. Do you want a juicy bit? Oh, yes. A nice juicy bit. Mm, nom, 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 nom. It's all gone. You've eaten it. You've eaten a lot today. <laughs> I'm sure there's more. I'm sure there's more. I promise you there's not more. It's all gone. <laughs> right. Let's go. Let's go.